All right, I'm getting ready to take apart my winter setup, which is simply an aerator. Pumps air through a garden hose down into the bottom of the pond through a nozzle with uh, four or five holes in it. Brings up bubbles to keep oxygen in the water, and it also keeps the pond from freezing over because it disturbs the surface of the water. And uh, so far, it does, doesn't matter how much it freezes or how much it snows, it's always kept a good circle open there and uh, keeps the pond aerated so the fish don't lack oxygen. Anyway, you can see I have an algae bloom here. It's warming up, the sun's shining. It's time to set up my summer setup or spring setup. And that setup is putting a pump down in the bottom of the pond. What I'll do is I'll drop this pump in an improvised container, cover it with filter media, hold it down with some mesh and some wire. It will pump water through this hose and into a sleeve that I just made. This sleeve is a bigger hole which is going to reduce the pressure and it also has holes in it that I just made with the drill. It's going to reduce the pressure coming out so it's not coming out real hard. With the hose and the sleeve attached, drop down into the bottom of this pan. The pan will be dropped into this top pond which will be my biofilter. The uh, filled with plants and sediments and stuff will drop from up in the pond, it'll come up here and drop down and settle inside the pond. Of course, I have to change it every fall. But that's uh, the setup I have for spring. And it'll, of course, spill over in the front, creating disturbance in the water to keep oxygen flow. And that's my bio setup for the spring. I'm going to do it right now and uh, let you see what it looks like. let that thing sink down and I'll set it in place and after it's in place I'll be able to turn the pump on and I'll add vegetation to it as the season proceeds okay it's set down in place now all I have to do is add the power and there's the power blew the air out of the hose and now it's flowing and it will start to spill over in the front now, of course, this is unsightly. It's not something you want to look at. So I add vegetation. What I do is I took hydroponically grown mint and put it in there and also lily pads and whatever other aquatic vegetation I can get. And, of course, my hydroponically grown mint comes from back here. Every year I have mint that grows in this back section and grows down into the pond here. And you can see there's some right here now. In fact, I'll put some in the front pond. Now, this uh, will grow in moving water without soil. I just throw it right over in that top pond. And it will establish itself quite well as the season warms up. Just throw it on in here. Of course, it's good to anchor some of it like so, so it has a, a base, so it's not moving around. And it'll grow there, it'll fill this whole area in. Here I also have a lily root that wintered over in this pond. I'm gonna move that up front to this pond, stick it right in that 
tub that's going to fill out real nice and cover this whole area up. It should anyway. Did last year, it did great. Get another nice clump of this hydroponically grown mint. See that mint, it survives all winter down in that water. It's amazing. But a lot of people don't know about this trick. And stick it in here. Let it have its way. There we go. I'm set up for the summer. It's interesting because as soon as this pond starts circulating from this spillway, the fish become more active. I'll throw a little bit of food in there. I don't want to give them too much because it's early in the season and the water is still cool. But once I get above 50 degrees temperature, that's when I start putting food in my pond. Before then, they could just nibble off the sides and eat whatever algae is building up. So, let's see if some come up. There they come. They're starting to come up now. 